Okay, uh, next thing I'll do is show you some scope readings of the 555 chip in operation. And um, the problem is I don't really have a good oscilloscope at this point. Um, I have this. <laughs> a friend of mine uh, lent it to me, which is basically, uh, as you can see, a USB oscilloscope. Um, I went to the Parallax website and uh, downloaded the software to run it, which looks like this and the problem with this software is this software doesn't work really well if you want to look at like uh, the voltage fluctuations of millivolts up around like 10 volts um, because it scales it from like zero to whatever voltage you're dealing with so uh, the other problem with this oscilloscope is that um, I did not have the plugs for these uh, pins on the bottom um, so what I had to do was create my own. So I created my own using uh, this one of the wires. I exposed a, a length of it and I made a, a little tight coil around um, the insulation of like a wire just like this one. And, um, and then I pulled it off so that it was just kind of free floating there. And I added some solder around the outside to make it a better connection. And then I put a layer of um, electro tape around that, and then some tin foil, <laughs> and then uh, I I took uh, another one of the wires um, and I just kind of put it on there and, and wrapped the electro tape to to make contact. Okay, so I've connected the scope. Uh, I put on my little crappy makeshift plug, and uh, one of the terminals is connected to ground, and the other one is connected to the output of the 555 timer. And uh, for right now, I've disconnected the primary of the uh, flyback transformer. Uh, there's a little run button right here. I hit that, and then you can see the waveform. Oh yeah, I was playing around right before. Uh, you can see the um, let's see the little noise that in the bottom corner of the thing. That was um, due to the filter, and I was playing with it and seeing what it would be like without it. And as you can see, this um, this is where those capacitors connect, uh, and it's disconnected. So um, if I plug that back in, there we go. Uh, we go back over to the scope. Uh, you can see those little corners on the um, wave are cleaned up now. So I have a nice clean waveform. Uh, it gives me some information about how it's running. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Oh well. Okay, so what I've done now is I've connected uh, to the um, power, power MOSFET. I've connected a speaker and a little resistor to, um, to the power. I mean to the positive terminal of the battery. So basically, um, I used to do this when I wanted to hear the frequency in the 555 timer. That would kind of help me get an idea of, you know, what the oscillations were. But I couldn't really tell, like, duty cycle and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's what the oscilloscope's for. So what I'm going to do now is uh, put the oscilloscope to um, probe this while the speaker um, on the on the power MOSFET side. Uh, so I'll do it over the speaker and this resistor, and that should give me enough voltage um, and show the oscillations positive terminal and the other side of the speaker. So now I'll turn it on and the waveform is practically solid line. So what do I make of this? Well, Maybe it's just tiny voltage somewhere. Let me try some other configuration over here and see if I can get it to uh, to work. Like uh, let me just try to put the probe on the other side of the speaker. See if that does anything. Oh yeah, so now I've got something. Then I left it down on the 200 millivolts, so. That's weird that the speaker did causes such a crazy change. This is a really weird waveform. Let me uh, make it steady. Wow, that's interesting, I guess. Um, if I take the speaker out, And I'll just put a short in where it was. Um, now let's see what I get. Oh yeah, 
so the speaker itself was totally screwing with this somehow. Um, let me see what I've got. That's a lot more like what I was expecting. Um, this is the zero. I'll just put it right there. So. Um, interesting. So this is on the output side. And one thing that's kind of interesting is the, um, the off time and the on time aren't really as close to 50% as it was on the uh, output of the uh, 555 timer. So that's one thing maybe I could uh, tweak if I really want to make this um, better. Alright, so now I've hooked up the transformer and um, like so the primary is all connected as it was and I've connected the uh, uh, oscilloscope probe to just monitor the entire power range. I kind of want to see what the um, what kind of fluctuations I'm getting uh, as like kickback from the uh, transformer and I'm hoping it's uh, like my filters here are going to do a good enough job to protect the oscilloscope because it can only support up to like I think 22 volts or something so um, uh, that's set up I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and see uh, I got another one of these uh, actually that's good news that means my filter is uh, doing a good job of getting rid of those spikes. I'm with my other hand I'm gonna actually move the spark gap so it's not just a short and see what we get. It's still pretty steady so that's good news. Assuming, uh, like I said, that this oscilloscope is giving me meaningful information. So that's cool. I guess the next thing to do is, um, well, let me look at the output of the 555 timer while the um, transformer is on there. So there's my nice square waveform. And there doesn't seem to be much noise, but I'm going to move my other hand and uh, make the gap. And I set the trigger point to be a little bit more solid. Okay, here we go. Yeah, you can see some noise this time. But it's not too bad. Okay, so what I've just added is in parallel with the um, primary, I've added this uh, resistor and then this short, so, um, well, wire. Basically, just the resistor over the gap. And I'm going to probe um, the resistor here so that I can see um, kind of the current going through the power MOSFET. And then look at the waveform. OK. So I'm going to turn it on. And the resistor should keep the oscilloscope safe. Here goes. So this is interesting. With the um, with the transformer on here, we're getting a similar waveform that we were getting with the uh, speaker connected. Um, I'm gonna now play a little bit with the transformer and see what that does. Oh wow, that's really screwing with it. Okay. Um, Wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> so the stable form we were seeing there was when the um, when the flyback was just shorted like that, and when I was pulling um, when I was pulling back on the stick and making the gap between the pin and the um, positive of the high voltage. Oh, by the way, this has probably got capacitance charged up. Okay. Um, anyway. Um, it was really interesting how much noise there was um, on the um, on the gated side, but we saw just a second ago that there wasn't much noise um, over all the power, and we didn't see that there was much noise on the output of the 555 timer. So despite the the fact that the um, that the primary can cause quite a bit of noise while it's running, it doesn't seem to be affecting the rest of the circuitry, which is good.